Proverbs chapter 7 in your Bibles. We talked about this on Sunday a little bit here. I Some of you missed this, but um, it's very powerful uh, on the strange woman. And uh, just by way of some review, really, when you read Proverbs chapter 7, you'll get a lot of that review. Uh, my son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Keep my commandments and live, and my law as the apple of thine eye. Bind them upon thy fingers, write them upon the table of thine heart. Say unto wisdom, thou art my sister, and call understanding thy kinswoman. That they may keep thee from the strange woman, from the stranger which flattereth with her words. You know, we talked about that on Sunday, about the strange woman. This is a woman that is a harlot, okay, and this strange woman, she flatters other men with her words. That doesn't mean, hey, you know, small talk. That means that she is actually heaping flattering, flirtatious praises and attention towards a man that is not her husband. And that, that is sinful. That is an attribute of a strange woman. Uh, he, he says, he goes on to say that, uh, for at the window of my house, I looked through my casement and beheld, among the simple ones, I discerned among the youth, a young man void of understanding. Now, we're going to talk about that young man, that simple man. We'll talk about him, the simple man that follows the strange woman. We'll cover that one week, uh, one message, but we won't cover that tonight. But anyway, uh, this is a warning for everyone. This is a warning for a married lady not to have the attributes of a strange woman. This is a warning for a single lady not to have the attributes of a strange woman. This is also a warning for a, a young man not to, to be able to identify the attributes of a strange woman and to stay away from her. Not not to ha- not to uh, keep company with her, not to get engaged with her, not to spend a lot of time with her. When a woman shows these attributes, it's it's it, these are the attributes that the Bible talks about uh, as being a strange woman, and uh, you know you, you need to watch that. You need to be careful about that. The Bible uh, is giving warning. And, and passing through the street near her corner, and he went away to her house in the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of a harlot and subtle of heart. We talked about that subtle of heart, that 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 heart that does not really reveal what her purpose is. Uh, Satan was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. He was he is more subtle. She has that heart after a satanic heart that is really hiding and deceiving and covering really what her motives are. Her true motives are to trap this young man and to bring him down, to steal his purity and to steal his money and basically to steal his life and deliver it to hell. That's really what she's being used of the devil to do. And there there are ladies out there, or women out there, I should call them, that really they, they will set their eyes on a young man and they will try to steal his purity from him. I know you think that only happens to women, but it doesn't. There there are there are women out there that will do that. They that's they have that desire, they catch him in their with their eyes, the Bible talks about. They we'll, we'll get to that in a second. We're just doing a review here until we get to the main part of the message here. Actually we'll talk about the eyes in a minute here. But uh subtle of heart. We're actually gonna talk about the attire of a harlot tonight. Very subtle, very subtle, conniving. You know, I, I have met some ladies like that that are very, very conniving. They're very subtle, very conniving, very deceitful, very manipulative. They, they like to manipulate men. And the simple man will fall for that manipulation. They'll fall for that. They'll see that. And they, they they only see that oh this lady she likes me, you know she she wants something to do with me. So she's and behold there met him a woman with the attire of a harlot and settled apart. Now we talked about this. She is loud and stubborn. You know a loud and stubborn woman will be heard no matter what. She will let you know just what she's thinking no matter what. No matter if it's the worst time in the world for her to bring it up. <laughs> she's going to get her point across no matter what. And by the way, don't get upset. This is Bible. I'm not reading anything of my own words. This is direct Bible. It's a wonderful thing about that. You don't have to argue with me. You just argue with God. Because I'm not reading any... I'm not taking a... There's not a bunch of grand notes here and everything. No, this is just Bible. I'm just reading what the Bible says. 
She is loud and stubborn. Stubborn. Will not be corrected by anybody. Will not be corrected by her father, by her husband. Will not be corrected by, by preaching of God's word. Will not be corrected, but rebuffs at it and rebels against it. Just gets angry about it. You ever met somebody that when the plain preaching of God's word is preached, the lady, and she gets very stubborn, gets very angry, gets very loud, a loud woman. By the way, that, that, what that is saying is she has to talk, she will talk over a man. She will not lower her voice, but she, she kind of gives those grievous words that stir up wrath and anger. You know, ladies, you can do a lot. By being quiet when a husband starts to rant and rave and act like a moron. Amen. You you can do a lot. You know what it is. You know what it's called. Very soft words. You know why? Because after a while, he's going to realize how much of an idiot he's been. Amen. He's going to realize how much of an idiot he's been. When he looks over at you and you're not, and all you're doing is talking really softly and really calmly to him. Because a soft answer turns away wrath. But I know a lot of women that, that, that want to be like a man, and they want to start flexing their muscles. Anyway, they, they want to get loud and stubborn and louder than you. They, that's their point. They're going to do that. So, uh, the Bible says those are attributes of a strange woman. That loud and stubborn speaking. I mean, I've seen women that are other people's wives want to yell at me and get mad at me and get really angry with me and, and raise their voice and yell and kind of hoop and holler a little bit. And I'm just standing there, oh, okay. But, um, I mean, I've had some, I know you could hardly imagine this, but I've actually had some people get mad at me. I've actually had a few ladies yell at me. I, I don't know if that surprises you at all. But the point is, is that they, they, they have those attributes that loud and stubborn. The, the, now, the next one is, her feet abide not in her home. A married woman that she can't stay at home. She's always got to be out doing something. Can never stay at home. Can never be satisfied or feel as if her worth is there by just staying home and taking care of the children, being the queen of the castle, taking care of it, taking care into, you know, into what, what they have, being a good stewardess there and, and just kind of managing the affairs of the home. That's not good enough. Got to always be out running around. Got to always feet abide not in their home. Can't stay home. And let me clarify that by saying I don't mean like your wife's been home, you know, a month and a half straight. She wants to go somewhere and do something. You know what I mean? Or a week straight. And she's like, hey, can I leave the house? Like, <laughs> can I get some coffee? I mean, I'm not talking about that. Okay, Let, let's make sure that we're not we're not being foolish with this. What it's talking about is always out and about in other people's businesses. Always running around. Never. Never can be settled at home. Always got to be into something else. Because there have been ladies that have pretty much abandoned their family to take off and go save some other people's kids. Amen. And men that weren't man enough to stand up to them and tell them no. Or the pastor no. Anyway, so she caught it. No, tonight we're gonna, we're, we won't read the rest of this. Um, we'll get into it eventually. But what we're going to cover tonight is is uh, the eyes of a harlot, the eyes of a strange woman. It, in Proverbs 6.25, it says, Lust not after her beauty in thine heart, neither let her take thee with her eyelid. So, in other words, this lady, her looks are not looks of purity, but they're looks of availability. Do you understand the difference? They are looking at a man to let them know that they are available. Now, that doesn't mean that you can never look at somebody. Say, hi, how you doing? <laughs> I mean, it's okay. You can look at somebody. That's not what that Bible... You know when a look is not a pure look. You understand that. I mean, I hope you do anyway. Um, you understand the difference in that look. A guy knows the difference in that look, believe me. Amen. At least I hope you do. But... <laughs> But they, they know the difference. You know the difference in that look, okay? The Bible's talking about with their eyelids. Neither let her take thee with her eyelids. That means the type of look that it talks about. Now, some talk about the general custom in the East to paint the eyelids 
and, and uh, you know, drawings with expresses. Now I'm talking about Jezebel's version of painting the eyelids where, I mean, that stuff's painted on pretty thick, and, you know, you could, it, it, it looks like a, it looks like two headlights in the night. Uh, I mean, it's, you can see it coming about a mile away down the road. Um, you know, um, I don't think it's a thing. It's sinful to, to use any, any eyeliner in it. I don't believe it's saying that. I mean, I, I think you know when something's extreme or when it's not or when you're trying to draw attention, you're not. I, so, so keep this into perspective. There's a, there's, but I personally happen to believe it's more than just putting on some makeup. I think what it's disgusting here is the way that you look at somebody. I, I think the Bible is dealing with the way that you look at somebody. Uh, because it doesn't say, thou shalt not put this on or anything. It doesn't really say that. So what I believe that it's dealing with here is their eyes appear to be giving an indication of something. You've heard of batting your eyes at someone? You've heard of that, right? You understand that? What is being talked about here? Let her not take thee as in a net with the sparkling of her eyes, with the wanton and amorous glances of them. Let her not captivate thee. Do you understand that? You all know that, you men should know this, you're not, you don't look, you don't look into a woman's eyes very long. You understand that it's not your wife. I mean, you get that, right? You don't, you don't look into some woman's eyes for a long period of time. Why is that? Because doing that, by doing that, in that way, they can captivate you with their eyes. Amen? I hope you, may, I mean, <laughs> I'm looking out and I'm thinking, is anybody getting this? Or what? <laughs> I mean, you, you know what I'm talking about right here. I'm not the only guy that understands that. Brother Lee, I, you understand that, right? You, you, you can't look at a woman too long, right, in, in her eyes, and she's gonna, she's gonna, you know, she's gonna captivate you. Right? Yeah, that's right. You're, he just looked at his wife. He's like, yeah, that's right. Yeah. But, uh, but that's, that's the way, that's the way it is. Amen? It's, it's that look that is given. So the Bible is saying this strange woman will give that look to men that, that is, that's not their, their, uh, or to men that is not their husband. They'll give it to, this woman is a, a housewife that has gone out, that is the strange woman that is giving those looks to other men. She is captivating them with her eyes. She is taking them with her eyes. Instead, of, you know, that doesn't mean you can't look at anybody. What it's taught, you know what that look is. I don't, whether men will admit it or not, women definitely know what that look is. They understand that. And that's why you're married to them. They understand it real well. <laughs> Amen. But uh, that's how it works. Anyway, it's an improper look from a lady that can send a signal to a man that you're available. Remember this in dealing with a married woman, so it's, the Bible is talking about a married lady here. You know, sometimes you think, well, I'm married, I don't have to worry about it. No, you do have to. You do have to be cautious. You do have to be wise. You do have to do things right. Amen. Be circumspect. But a strange woman will take thee with her eyelids. In other words, some say this may have to do with she makes her eyes or paints them such as Jezebel did after a gaudy fashion. And, and that was the, the sign to send out a signal as well, to the, of the same fashion. I'm not sure about that. I just that was an Eastern custom that they that they dealt with a little bit. You know, the, the thing, the, the difference being, I don't, I don't. It's like eating is not a sin, but the excess of it can be a sin. I believe that's the same thing with 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 makeup with a lady. If you're doing it to draw attention to yourself, you know, for the purpose of drawing men to you, then the purpose is wrong. Amen. Then, then the purpose becomes wrong. Um, you know, it's not wrong to take care of yourself. It's wrong to draw unnecessary attention to yourself as a lady. Why? Because that's the opposite of being modest. And we're going to talk about that in a second here, too. By the way, eyes have been called the windows of the soul. Think about that. Now, he goes on to talk about he's, that, that he found a woman with the attire of a harlot. But you know what? The Bible never really explains what the attire of a harlot is. You know why? Because it's so matter of fact that you really don't have to. You understand what the attire of a harlot is when you see it. Or one that's giving the impression that they're for sale. Amen? One that gives the impression that they are looking for, for something. 
Now, turn to 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 9. We'll take this reference and we will do the opposite. Because this is saying what a godly woman is. Then we'll take this reference and we'll, we'll completely go the opposite direction with it. 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 9. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array. The harlot will then have immodest apparel on. See the difference? Modest, immodest. Modest means not bold or forward, as a modest maid. The word may be thus without reference to chastity. Not loose or lewd. That means not a lewd, not lewd uh, articles of clothing on. Moderate, not excessive or extreme. Not extravagant. Has a modest request or modest joy. It, it, it's not excessive. Basically, you don't walk in the room and you're not trying to turn everybody's head when you walk in the room. You ever met ladies like that? Amen. Where, where they walk in the room and they've got, they've got their flesh showing. Right away you know what's going on there, right? Their flesh is showing. In other words, the harlot, they draw attention to themselves. They turn every man's head when they walk in the room by the way that she is dressed. She wants everybody to know what she is wearing and for you to look at her. Not trying to blend in and be modest, but trying to stand out and be bold and brassy. Look at, don't look at it, but you remember some of the old Hollywood movies where they would show the showgirls and things like that? And they would show the dancers and everything? What did they have on? They showed the upper half of their body, their chest, and they showed, and they and they had, they would wear their dresses up so you could see their legs. Why? Because they want you to notice them when they walk in the room. That's their point. Lady, listen very closely. God doesn't want you to be that way. Do you understand that? God doesn't want you to walk in the room and turn every head. There's only one head. That's the head that God placed over you that should be turning like that. Amen? And if you are wearing something that is not modest, that does not blend in, that is extravagant, that is brassy, that is bold, that is sassy, then what you're doing is you're attracting other men. You say, but that's not my goal. I, that doesn't matter. That's what you're doing. And it's an attribute of a strange woman. Amen? Folks, this is just truth. This is what the Bible says. Difference in modest and immodest. A strange woman does not, it will be immodest. She will walk around and dress in whatever she wants to. In females, modesty has the light character as in males, but the word is used also in synonymous with chastity or purity of manners. In this sense, modesty results from purity of mind or from the fear of disgrace. Fortified by education, excuse me, in principle. Unaffected modesty is the sweetest charm of female excellence, the richest gem and the diadem of their honor. Your goal when you dress, ladies, listen to me closely, your goal when you dress ought to be to glorify God, not to look good. After you glorify God, then you pick something out that looks good. But if your first goal, if your first and foremost, foremost goal is to look good, What are you saying? God doesn't care what I wear. You're saying that God doesn't care what I put on. Do you believe that? Do you believe that God above does not care what you put on? What you cover yourself with? Listen, I'm not not being mean. I'm not being unkind. I'm being biblical. And I'm just explaining to you that God cares what you wear. If you were under the impression that God didn't care what you put on, then you're wrong. And first and foremost, your clothes should honor God. Amen. That's first. In whatever you adorn yourself with, the Bible talks about adorning, right? That's putting on of things, that's adorning yourself. But it says adorned with modest apparel. But the strange woman, what does she care about? Well, does it look good? Does it look good? 
That's that's all that matters. Does it look good? Is somebody going to like it? What if men like it too much? Amen? What if men like it too much? Let me give you a little bit of reality. Men do like it too much. And men will look at you and lust after you if you are not dressed right. Now, see, this is real preaching here. This is the stuff that bothers you. This is the stuff that you go home and do an inventory check of your life and make sure that you're honoring and glorifying God. Why? Because that's what you were saved to do. See, but I like, I like, I know, I know, but you forgot one principle. It's not what you like. It's what He wants. Ye are not your own. You are bought and paid for with a price. So glorify God in your body. Now, if you are showing too much flesh, does that glorify God? Does it? What God calls naked or nakedness, does that glorify God if you're not covered? No. No. But I like it. Yeah, I know. But you said that you love him. And he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Amen? That's what God said. That's what Jesus said. If you love me, keep my commandments. In other words, that that modest woman is not dressing to draw attention to herself, but the attire of the harlot is immodest. It's that tight clothing, the skin showing, making sure everyone sees your flesh. You be careful that what you wear is not so tight that they can see every curve of your body. Amen. You gotta be careful about that. Why? Because then men will look at every curve of your body. And then they will roll that around in their mind and they will lust after that. Why? Because the eyes of a man are never satisfied. They are never full, the Bible says. The eyes of a man are never full. They're never satisfied. Lady, if you only understood how men work, how they tick, how they, how they function, if you understood that, then you'd be careful. You'd be even more careful. And I'm not picking on anybody because I don't see any problems. I'm just saying that we have to be careful. We have to be cautious. Why? Because I don't want to... Let me ask you a question. Do you want to be the cause of somebody stumbling? You know how many preachers go into churches today and travel around the country and they can hardly preach there? At the church they go to because they look out and there's nothing but flesh showing. Everywhere. Just flesh showing. You know how hard that is for a man to stand up and preach and to see that? Or to try to ignore that? I'm not, I, we don't have that problem here. I'm just, I'm saying, I'm just saying that it, it is an issue. And it is an issue in your life. Because whatever you dress like in here and whatever you dress like in at home, just remember that God sees. Now, what you do behind your own closed doors, that's your business. That's none of anybody else's. But when other people are going to see you, you're to be modest. Because the attributes of a strange woman is immodesty. Flashy. I'm amazed. Never have I seen so much of the reality of what people really believe as when I'm on Facebook and I see some of these young ladies that grow up in these bastion of fundamentalism and all their standards and all their wonderful preaching and all their teaching and everything else. And then you see that all it was was just a standard. I'm not preaching a standard on you. I haven't even talked about the the, the fundamental words that, that the Baptist preachers want to preach on. I'm talking about you as a concept of modesty. That, that's, that's my concern, is modesty. Because if you learn modesty and biblical holiness, well, you'll figure out the way a lady's supposed to be dressed. You'll understand that. But I, when I look at when I look at some of these ladies, 
you know, the, the friends and different things that pop up in Facebook and, and all that. When I, when I look at their friends of friends and then I see them and I'm thinking, you gotta be kidding me. These people, but they don't care. They're very bold and they're very brassy. They want to dress after that sassy fashion. Why? Because they're exhibiting the characteristics of a strange woman. And they probably never had a preacher stand up and tell them that. They just preached, wear a skirt, wear a dress, don't wear this, don't wear that. Or their dad never led them. And usually it's because the dad's real scared of the mom. That's usually what it is. They're, they're really scared of the, the mom. Because the mom thinks it looks cute or whatever, so they don't, they're really scared. Bunch of limp wrist limps. Sad. Anyway, the Bible talks about this attire. Turn to Isaiah chapter 47. I want to show you something from the Bible. It gives us a clue about immodesty. About the attire of a harlot. About immodesty. Isaiah chapter 47. Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground. There is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans. For thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. Take the millstones and grind meal. Uncover thy locks. Make bare the leg. Uncover the thigh. Pass over the rivers. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered. Yea, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance. I will not meet thee as a man. What is he describing here? He says here that the attire, that nakedness to God is this. Uncover thy locks. Make bare the leg. So showing the legs. Make bare the leg, uncover the thigh, pass over the rivers. He's speaking of uncovering the thigh. So we understand that your legs should be covered. Amen? Does that make sense? And if they're not, then what is that? Naked. Now, just so you know, I didn't make that up. It's right there. Amen? I, I didn't make it up. What is it talking about wearing, I've seen some, not, not here, um, but I, I've seen Christians, I've seen Christians, and they've wore these thigh, these mini skirts basically. What's the Bible talking about? They're saying that if you uncover the thigh, that's an attribute of a harlot. What you are telling people is that you're for sale. Well, that's very interesting. It's very sad, actually. Now, I've never had anybody show me that, by the way, so, I mean, you probably have neither, I'm sure. So don't feel bad, because preachers don't really preach on this a lot. They might, they might touch it a little bit, but they, they always tell you where this, where that, but they don't ever tell you why. Why? Because the Bible says that's why. But I mean, I wouldn't know that. I just thought that was some preacher's standard. I've been saved for 11 years, and I found that verse by accident. I've heard them say, no, wear this, and it has to be this, and they get the measuring stick out for the college girls. And I'm sorry. I can't stand that whole system. It's just, it just great. Son. Anyway, um, take the millstone, grind mill, uncover thy locks, make bare the leg. So in other words, lady, you're not being modest if you make bare the leg. If you're... If you've got something up here, and that's why they say that up here on the thigh, then, then you are showing you are showing your body off. You are giving the impression of being a strange woman. Does that make sense? Now, the same thing can be said to the lady that wears the skirt down to her ankles, but wears it so tight that you can see everything, and it reveals everything. Although she thinks she's a better Christian than the lady that doesn't put any 
that doesn't wear pants, um, or, or whatever the case may be, uh, she's not. <laughs> because she's doing the same thing. Amen? Because she's still revealing the outline of her body, but then it does give her something to point a finger at somebody over and say, hey, you're terrible, you're this, you're that, you know, you're I'm better than you because I don't wear this. And, you know, when, when new believers come into the church and they, they're they not dressed, uh, you know, right, then they point a finger at them. But if you're wearing something that is so tight, you, you, you miss the, you know what you miss? You miss the spirit of the text, which is what? Modesty. You missed it. Amen? Hey, now, again, this is not saying you've got to put a bag over your head or you've got to put a bag over your, your body, a big old bag, and get a drawstring and, and just walk around in it. That doesn't say that. Does it? You don't have to look frumpy. Amen? <laughs> you, you, you don't have to do that. You don't have to, you don't have to walk around like that. You don't have to live like that. Nobody's saying that. The Bible's not saying that. In fact, you're not supposed to look, you know, I, I wouldn't suggest, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't suggest look at, you know, as you go back in history, you can see in the 1800s, those women were not modest all the time either. Because you can see their dresses where they wore those tight things where their waist comes in like, do you remember, you know what I'm talking about? I don't know what those are called. Somebody, anybody know what those Brother brother Andrew, you know what those are called. What's that called when they wear that? that what corset, yeah. Where they suck that all in. Well, they weren't modest either. That's not modest. Amen. It isn't, is it? That's not. They, 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 I, I don't know what they. It looks uncomfortable. Well, I hope you wouldn't know, Lee, but you did offer that information pretty quickly, so I just. A little shocking there. I mean, the way, he, the way you go in on about it there and smile, you're like, that's uncomfortable. So I just. I don't know. It's a little, okay. I'm glad he clarified that. But anyway, we see in these verses that God considers a woman uncovering her leg or her thigh to be nakedness. So we have to agree, we have to understand that, that this is a principle of Scripture we've got to be careful about, okay? So, shirts too short and, 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 and different types of, uh, clothing that are too short or, or that are too revealing are nakedness unto God. You say, but, yeah, but that's not being naked. Yeah, I know, lady, the society says going to the beach in a bikini is not naked, but God says it is. Amen? Or in a one-piece. I got in trouble one time because everybody says, what are you for, one-pieces? You never mentioned it. That was Brother Andrew or somebody said that to me. You never mentioned one-pieces, brother. So I said, okay, let me mention a one-piece, too. That's still immodest. You still run around naked. So there we go. Uh, but, uh, and Lloyd just gave me a shocked look there. He's like, are you serious? One-pieces are wrong? What, they didn't teach you that at camp? That's funny. Hey, they didn't cover that standard in camp. But, uh, amen. Anyway, uh, but what's the, what's the point? The point is that, that when you are, when, when you are wearing that type of material, why are you wearing it? Clothes are an attitude. So why, why are you wearing what you're wearing? Are you wearing them to honor God? Or are you wearing them to show off? You know, what's the reason? What's the purpose? Again, that doesn't mean you can't look nice and take care of yourself and do all that. That doesn't mean that. Nobody's saying that. It just means that, you know, you can do all that and still be modest. You can still cover yourself. Okay? All right. The Proverbs 7 woman had on the attire of a harlot. She was a married woman, and this should compel ladies that are married to take heed to this as well and not to exempt themselves from the teaching and preaching. You need to be just as careful being married as you do being single. Because, quite honestly, as the husband is the head, you two need to come to an agreement about clothing. And husband, you need to be concerned about what your wife is wearing. You do need to be concerned about it. Why? Because she's yours. And if you like something a little too much, so does the next guy. Is that Think about that. The harlot is not, the strange woman is not bashful or shy in her dress, but she is bold. In 1 Timothy 2, 9, in like manner also, the women adorn themselves, again, in modest apparel. Now, it talks about embroidered hair as well, or gold or pearl. Uh, according to Jake, this is what he says about this, which is interesting, as far as the definition of embroidered hair. Women wore a hollow silver or gold tuber horn, 18 to 20 inches long on the forehead, adorned with all kinds of precious stones. 
I don't know how it works, but that's what they wore back then. Having strong cords suspended from it to the back, which reached to the knees, and had tassels of red silk weighted with lead. These kept the horn from toppling in front. The whole thing was rendered firm by a network of cords which supported it by a strong band fastened tightly under the jaw. <laughs> That's a weird thing to wear. A veil was worn over the horn in such a manner as to leave its lower half uncovered in front. Basically, what the Bible is saying here is with braided hair and some people say, well, that's just braided hair. No, it's not talking about just braided hair. It's talking about braided with gold and silver and all kinds of things to draw attention to yourself. You know, it, it, it is all those things that just make people look at you. To stand out. Are you to stand out as a lady? Is that what God wants from a lady, to stand out? No. No. He doesn't. Stop looking at what this world wants and look at what God says in his word. You and I are not to be fashioned after this world, but we're to be transformed by the renewing of our mind, by what the Word of God says. Regarding the hair, which may be the reference here, that it was worn in the back in braids from one to a record of 110 braids. Wow, how did somebody do that? And each braid would be woven silk cords and gold coins at irregular distances and reaching down to the knees, glittering at every movement of the, of the wearer. In other words, they were walking into the church house and they were just like, like, Jingling, jingling, jingling when they were walking. You know, they had all this gold, and you know that's why he was. That was a custom. So what they were saying, what he was saying is, is you know that costly array. By the way, that also, and, and I don't know if we'll cover it this week, but one, part of this you need to understand too, as well as the sign of a strange woman. One of those signs is that she has to spend all the money. She spends a whole lot of money. You know, and and she's not at all. Uh, content with what she has. Always just have the nicest, newest, spend all the money, spend all the substance. And uh, the prodigal, he spent on riotous living. What did he spend his money on? He spent on women. The wrong woman, you'll be spending a lot of money on her. Now, the right woman, you'll spend a lot of money too. But it, <laughs> but it just won't, it won't be the same way. It won't be because of, you know, the fancy, the fancy, glittery, you know, I mean, you can use glitter if you want to, I guess. I don't know. But uh, as long as you don't come in church with a bunch of coins on your head and you're shaking your head and you got all these silver strings running down, I won't say anything to you, but I will make fun of your husband. But, but, uh, sometimes caps completely covered with coins or frontlets ornamented, ornamented with diamonds were worn. You don't understand the principle, right? A bunch of gaudy jewelry everywhere. Got to show everybody everything. Got to have all these rings on. Got to have all this stuff on. What is it? It's not modest. The Bible going to say, oh, it's wrong to have a necklace. No, it's not what this Bible is saying. It's, it's that gaudiness. It's that, that you know, it's gotta, got everybody's got to know, right? Um, you know, everybody's got to see you, you coming and, you know, um, or hear you coming by the jingles. But, uh, by the way, another attribute of this was that shorn hair that it talks about is that, um, had, uh, in Corinth, the Satanist women would shave their head. Now, anybody notice Britney Spears and Miley Cyrus? Anybody notice how they shave their heads? If you look, if you look at Miley Cyrus, which I don't suggest, anyway, but uh, on a news report or something, you'll see it. And what does she have? She, she basically shaved her head. What is that? Rebellion. It's a sign of witchcraft. It's rebellion against God. She has to have it shaved. I'm not talking about shaved. She shaved it. Britney Spears, same thing, shaved her head. What is that? It's a sign of rebellion. Why? Because God made you to have long hair. Isn't that? That's what he made you. What that means is you're not supposed to shave your head. Now, some ladies' hair grows longer than others. That's a different story. That's not the Bible is saying don't purposely take your, take your head off. It was rebellion. That's why they were doing it. One of the characteristics of a harlot is she likes to spend a lot of money. In Proverbs 6.26, for by means of a whorish woman is a man brought to a piece of bread. You know, that's a sign of a strange woman, by the way. If she can't be content with what you have, with what God has provided, but always have to have more, 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 more. Can't be happy with anything. God had the fanciest 
clothes, got to have the nicest house, got to have the most expensive stuff, can't ever be satisfied with anything, got to have more and more, not content. Let me tell you something. If you meet up with a lady like that, run away from her. Run far away from her. Because you will regret it the rest of your life when you get tangled up with her. Amen. When you get tangled, you'll, you'll regret it. She'll send all of this substance for her costly array. Some people call it high maintenance. This extremely high maintenance. You know? One thing I've seen about ladies like that, once the money's gone, so are they. And that's how it works. First Peter 3, 3, who's adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plating of the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel. You see, the harlot is all about the clothes. It's been a strange woman is all about the clothes, all about her hair, all about the jewels. All about everything. You notice that? How people talk about it? You hear it on television. You see it in movies. You see it in, or hear about it in songs. They talk about their jewelry, their cars, their money, their clothes, everything. Got to have it all. Materialistic, materialistic, materialistic. Was it Madonna sung that song, A Material Girl? She's just telling you the truth. Right. And she was definitely a strange woman. Amen? It's the motive of the way she dresses. She dresses for that to be extravagant like that. That's the whole purpose. The eyes of men are never full, the Bible says. That's why God's people have to be careful. Adam and Eve thought they were dressed in the garden. They sewed fig leaves on to cover. They thought they would just, they basically sewed, they made a bikini. That's what they did. That was the first bikini in the garden. Oh, okay, we'll just sew these aprons on. This will cover up everything. Not quite. Because what does God say? And unto Adam also unto his wife did the Lord make coats of skin and clothe them. And they said they were naked and they hid themselves. Why? Well, because they tried to make their little apron. And God said, well, that's not being dressed. Let me show you what being dressed is. And what did he do? He put a coat on him. How's a coat? How does that fit? Is a coat, is, are most coats, uh, extremely tight fitting? No. What are they? They're looser. They're a little looser. You know? They're, they're, they're a little bit bigger. Right? They're longer. What, what is the, what is the purpose of a coat? To cover you. In about four or five months, we'll remember the purpose of a coat. About three, maybe, actually. About three, let me back up a little bit. I forgot when it was. About three months, we'll remember the purpose of a coat. When it hits 30 below, let me ask you a question. When it hits 30 below, don't you make sure you're covered? You make sure you have a good coat. Brother, you better make sure you have a good coat. Welcome to Minnesota, buy a coat. Amen? Go to the Burlington Coat Factory if you have to, but go get a coat. Cover yourself, right? You're going to cover yourself, right? You don't want... Hey, by the way, when it's cold out there and it's 30 below and you have to be outside there, do you let any of your flesh get exposed? You make sure that flesh is covered, don't you? Why? Because the purpose of a coat is to cover me. So what did God, what did God do then? God put a coat on them, he said. And unto Adam and also to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skin and clothe them. He said, you're not clothed, you're naked. You sewed little fig leaves on and tried to make an apron, but that's not enough. So I'm going to give you a coat and I'm going to cover you. It had nothing to do with the temperature, it had to do with modesty. God was saying, this is modest. If it's not for sale, then you shouldn't advertise it. Amen? Amen? If it isn't for sale, then don't advertise it. The strange woman is advertising it for sale. The attire of the harlot is the absolute opposite of the attire of the biblical wife in the New Testament. The, the attire of a, of a harlot is not modest. She's stubborn. She's forward. She's perverse. And cares not for what is right. 
If it's too tight, don't wear it. But the forward women, woman does not care. If she, she'll show everything. It doesn't matter. A Christian lady ought to be careful that they're not advertising what's not on the market. Think of it this way. That God wants you covered. Because you are only to be exposed to one man. Amen? Don't look at society and gauge, well, I don't dress as bad as that. Because what you're doing is, is your, your, your measuring stick is a harlot. You understand that? Your measuring stick then is a strange woman. You're comparing yourself to a strange woman. You're saying, well, I'm not that bad. No. We're going to look to the Word of God. And we're going to say, what's the Bible say? What's the Bible say a modest woman is? She's covered. Amen? She's covered. But that forward woman, that, that, that woman that is aggressive and assertive and, and is making herself known wants everybody to see her. Don't you see every attribute of her? Loud and stubborn, why? Look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. It's all about me, it's all about me, it's all about me. That's the strange woman. It has to be about her. You know when she walks in the room, she makes her presence known. She wants you to know what she's up to. She wants to be bold and brassy and uncovered. Now, what you and I have to think about, and ladies, what you have to think about is, is I'm not a strange woman. The Bible says this woman had on the attire of a harlot. It doesn't really say she's a harlot. It says she had on the attire of a harlot. So, let me ask you, are you wearing things that are out of characteristic of your Christianity? Out of characteristic of the modesty that God wants you to have? By the way, that goes for men, too. It's not just women. I know we're talking about the strange woman, but men ought to be covered, too. Amen? That's right. What's that? Especially, that's right. I mean, <laughs> please, <laughs> but um, you, you ought to be covered. Men ought to be covered as well. No gun shows. No, no walking around in tank tops, men. Please, but uh, you know that that's not that. We're to be modest as well. You're not going to cover your thigh either. If you do it around me, I swear I'll kick you. I mean, I just, I, I will, I'll hurt you. <laughs> don't, don't, don't do that around me. I will, if I see your thigh men like that, I'm going to thigh kick you. That's what I'm going to do. I used to, I used to study some movie thigh. I will thigh kick you if I see it. But, uh, anyway. But that's, that's dishonoring to God as well. Amen. So men, but ladies, you have to understand that the eyes of a man are never satisfied. They're going to look. And they're going to lust if they see something that they shouldn't. No, that's their own sin. Every man, every man uh, is is drawn away and enticed of his own lust. You know, it's, it's his lust which is in his heart. But you don't need to do anything to help that along. You need to be careful about not help. You know, not aiding in that, not being a stumbling block to a brother or to the world. Your conversation is to be chased. It's the complete opposite of a loud and stubborn woman. Just remember that, and uh, um, we'll get back into this in a week or so. Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you that we can go through it and, and understand these things and learn from them. Help us, Lord, to repent where we need to repent. Help us to be cautious, Lord, and to glorify you in our dress, in our walk, in our talk, in our conversation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.